Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Tinubu orders release of grains to 50 million farmers and others. Senate seeks immediate action on Ondo ocean surge. Market forces driving price of petrol, says Kiari. Oyo Oshunkano, others declare holiday for Hijra 1445. UK agency okays Naira for trade financing. Tinubu orders NDLA to probe killing of two-year-old by operatives of the, of, um, in Delta, operatives in Delta. Senate House to probe NNPCL, NDDC, others, and CBN access 2,698 Rue de Change um, offices. Okay, let me start with the major headlines. So our president has ordered an immediate review of the 8,000 Naira that is supposed to be the conditional cash transfer to 12 million homes. He's also um, said that they'll be providing grains to 50 million um, farmers and households. This was according to um, the special advisor on, on special duties, um, communication and strategy, Mr. Adeli Alaki, was saying that um, they, they, you would agree that the president has been listening to Nigerians and he's been able to review based on the feedback they got. That obviously some of this information has been mixed with um, ill-informed perspective. However, um, the president has reconsidered and they have asked for an immediate review. He also described the subsidy as a hydra-headed monster that has been threatened to kill our economy. But with this instruction but from the president, they would also be providing um, a whole gamut of palliatives to Nigerians and various packages. Aside from the 50 million farmers to get um, the, sorry, the grains re released to 50 million farmers the, across the 36 states, they also um, assured Nigerians that the 500 billion naira that's been approved by the parliament to cushion the pain will be judiciously utilized. Uh, he says the beneficiaries of the release shall be Nigerians irrespective of their ethnic, religious, or political affiliation. Um, he also said that, we're well, just reminding Nigerians that the same way the business community had complained about the taxes and where the, the president had revoked some and delayed the implementation of others, is the same way the president has heard about this issue of the 8,000 naira and has asked for an immediate review. Mm. Okay. So Go we, okay. Go ahead. And Understood. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember this story. An NDLA doing a raid in Delta State had um, um, allegedly um, killed a two-year-old boy and, um, uh, and his younger brother also was shot. They said that while they were in a gun battle with the fleeing criminals, the uh, stray bullet hit that little boy, two-year-old boy, and also his uh, brother, the two-year-old boy, passed. The brother had to be rushed to the hospital you know, for um, resuscitation. Um, the, this led, of course, to outcries by the youth in Delta State. The, uh, gov the Delta State government and also the House of Reps had called on the IGP to look into the case and make sure that they, uh, it's, it's investigated. The president has also weighed in. He expressed his sadness um, for the passing of this um, little boy and also the injury that his younger brother sustained and, had asked that, and has asked that... Um, there has to be a quick and speedy investigation into how this happened and also prosecution of whoever it is that did this. Uh, as you all know, I'm a huge cheerleader for the NDLA. I'm sad that in the course of their duty, they have taken a life so tragically. Um, my heart goes out to the family and I hope that, you know, the proper thing is done where whoever it is that did this is called to book. Great. So yesterday we woke up to the sudden hike in pump prices of petrol. And um, that was by the NMPC, Nigerian National Petroleum Company, and their outlets. So it rose from 490 per litre in Lagos to 568 at the stations operated by NMPCL and major marketers. Uh, they said in the Federal Capital Territory, motorists and other users paid about 617 per litre against the 540. The new prices were ranging from 618 to 700 naira per litre in other parts of the country. So the group... Chief Executive Officer of the NMPCL, Mr. Mele Kiari, was saying that the market forces will continue to drive the prices of petrol. And the fact that um, well, um, there's an increase in the price of crude oil, uh, exchange rate, freight and handling costs, as well as import changes are some of the factors that would continue to affect and determine the prices of this imported 
petrol. And it's not because there is a short supply of petrol. They have enough that would last us for about 32 days. But it's just the fact that when marketers buy this petrol, they have to, you know, charge based on cost reflective prices so that they don't lose out in the market. But we have nothing to worry as it keeps going up and the fluctuations are happening that this is a way this is the way to go really for us to make a lasting change in the industry. They said, and I took that story yesterday, about 56 companies have received license already to begin importation. So hopefully as more people get into the business, the prices will yes. actually fluctuate back yes. to something that Nigerians can manage. So we just need to be a little bit patient. Yes. Thank mm. you so much for that. Another so um, Senator Ibrahim, Jimo Ibrahim, has um, sponsored a bill because of the surge in Ondo, on, uh, the uh, Ondo community. Ocean, Ondo Ocean. Yeah, yeah. Ocean. Erosion. The, uh, uh, the, you know, the uh, water is surging yes. and destroying the villages. So he has um, sponsored a bill for um, um, the government to rise to the occasion and save the threatened villager, villages and villagers, of course. Okay. So um, they were, okay. they, everybody hailed in as a well done for sponsoring that bill. Mm. And the, the, the um, village is always, that, that, those villagers are, they're really threatened. When the, right. um, the water. water comes in, mm. you know, it destroys everything. And they are one of the largest, no, no, they're the fifth largest producers of oil mm. in, in, that, in that area. Nigeria. Oh, in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Oh. Um, they, okay. they produce about 5.4 um, mm tons of oh, oil. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to the punch. NLC TUC Lambast Dinobu has fuel hit 630 naira to the liter. The Sean negotiation. Military threatening to demolish 5,000 houses. Open communities tell assembly. Troops kill two IPOR fighters, arrest five in Delta. CBN delists 2,698 borrow the change in one year. Tinubu backtracks, reviews proposed 8,000 naira cash palliative. Sustained air attacks on terrorist commander tells troops. North Central Southwest ex governors may replace Adamu and Omishere. Okay, which story are we starting with in the punch? So, lawmakers uh, representing Abiyokuta North uh, State Constituency, Babatunde Tela, yesterday called on the attention of the Ogun State House of Assembly to a petition by 20 communities in his constituency alleging planned demolition of over 5,000 buildings by the Nigerian army. So according to the lawmaker, they said the military accused the house owners in that area of encroaching into an expanse of land belonging to the Nigerian Army Division 32, Alamala Barracks. And so they are calling for the intervention of the uh, House of Assembly over the matter. So in response, the Speaker of the Assembly, Olakunle Uluomo, gave the assurance that they are going to get necessary stakeholders together to you know, find a lasting solution to what is happening there. They also cautioned men of the Nigerian Customs Service to stop harassing residents in the border communities in the state under the guise of clamping down on fuel smuggling into the neighboring countries. So we know that um, the federal government had banned the sale of fuel 20 kilometers around the borders. And so most of those residents there have been piling their fuel in cakes to preserve it, in gallons to preserve it. But then the custom... Uh, officers, some custom officers would carry out an illegal raid, go there and harass the citizens there. And so they are saying that they have to put a stop. That's not you know, what they are supposed to be doing. And that has to stop, among other issues that were raised in the House of Assembly. Yeah. So we remember our 8,000 Naira palliative that the president had proposed. Uh, they said the president has directed that this 8,000 conditional cash transfer program be reversed. Um, and reviewed immediately. Um, this was um, in a statement that was signed by his special advice on special duties, communications and strategy, Delhi Alake. Um, this was read, uh, you know, and so we're going to, this, the, the tone of the message is that, you know, they've listened, they've heard Nigerians' uh, response to this proposed arrangement and based on that, they've put a stay on it. They're going to review it and then we'll hear back them. All right, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. I just wanted to correct that it's 5% of 60,000, 5.4% of 60,000 barrels. Look at that in Undo. In Undo, oh. yeah. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to continue with the punch. Like you had a story, or? Um, okay. I had a story, I think. Did you take the story? 
But let me take the one that's a military. So um, according to um, Brigadier General Onyema Nwachuku, he mentioned that um, no fewer than two fighters of the ES and that's the Eastern Security Network of the, um, of the military wing of the indigenous people of, um, of Biafra, that's IPOP, were on Monday killed in Delta State. According to him, the terrorists succumbed to the overwhelming power, no, the overwhelming firepower of the troops of the military after two of their own members fell in the gunfight that ensued while the survivors fled to their hideouts around the Okwanam um, River. He also said they were able to trace them all the way to their, to their hideout and arrested about five and seized a few of their, of their weapons. So um, just saying that two members of the IPOP were killed according to Brigadier General Wachuku. Any other story in point? Let's move on quickly. Yeah. To... Well, the uh, chief of army staff uh, hailed them and said, "Well done, you've done." Nobody a good took job. It was military that threatened five thousand. What? Human interest. Military threatened to demolish five thousand houses. No, no, we're 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 taking it. We took the story. That's all. <laughs> Moving on to Daily Sun. Anger, agony as petrol price rises to six hundred and seventeen naira. Ex-governors, technocrats, top Tinubu's list of ministerial nominees. Appeal court dismisses Enugu APC Guba appeal against Mba. Outcome of presidential election tribunal may throw Nigeria into turmoil. But a judge warns. Why I sold my three children for 1.5 million naira success suspect. <clears throat> Ganduje opens up on 10 billion naira CCTV camera loan project. Senate raises the alarm over erosion menace in Edo Anambra. Damages court rules in favor of Honeywell others. Um, Ecobank to pay 72 billion naira. Okay, which story are we taking? Mm -hmm. Son? Senate uh, yesterday raised the alarm over the havoc wrecked by erosion in Edo and Anambra states. They had three separate motions, and the senators were calling for urgent interventions by the federal government to address the menace and save lives of citizens affected in both areas of the state. So uh, they said the flood has put many communities under constant threat of erosion devastation, resulting in massive gully erosions, flooding, and road devastations. A lot of people uh, die when they are just trying to cross some of those roads. And those roads are not being, they're not able to repair or build them. And this is beyond the purview of the state government. This is where they expect the federal government to come in and do something on those roads. So they mentioned some of the roads. Uh, the Okene Aochi Benin Expressway is a major road infrastructure in Nigeria. And that also began to fail at the Ekboma axis because of the several uh, gully erosions there. There are also Ewu Rumi Agbo Road corridor that has also experienced similar fate and other ones as well in Edo State. Then going to uh, Anambra State, they mentioned quite a few here. I'm trying to get the roads there. So they have um, uh, Onichaweri Federal Road between Electrical Parts Market and Metallurgical Training Institute, Obosi, and Oba Junction near Rojani Games Village in Indemili South, amongst other roads. So they are asking uh, that um, there's a need for collaboration between the federal agencies, Federal Ministry of Environment, Ecological Fund Office, and the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing towards uh, tackling this uh, menace of erosion. And um, they said they have to work together they have to work in collaboration. This is just beyond the states. It's more about the federal government trying to sort out these roads. So the River State Police Command recently arrested a Mr. Michael Charles for selling his children for 1.5 million. He had earlier given his name as Tango Chuku, and he hails from the Omoku in Ogba Egbema. Omok. I know that because my friend comes from Omok. Omoku. Omok. 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 <laughs> uh, so anyway. He has, um, they were arrested, uh, for, <clears throat> about seven of them for this uh, kidnap. Well, he says, no, no, it's, it's not, he didn't kidnap them. They're his own children that he sold. He said he had gone to his wife to a yeah. nurse to look after because his wife has a disability. She's deaf and dumb. He had gone there to, um, for her to look after Take the care. kids and she gave them 7,000. But then, I don't know how the miracle happened. He now sold the three children. They gave him, for the first child, Uchich, they gave him 700,000. He collected 350 for miracle, and the last one, 500,000. Wow. And he said it's because he's poor. And they didn't have any means to look after the kids. 
what you said the wife, the wife's mother said, he did it because the wife can't talk, and that's it's a lie. It's she, not that poor. Yeah, the mother in law. Mm. Yeah, that it was intentional yeah. to mm. sell the sell kids. Sell his kids. Okay, the president. Yeah, advantage, yeah, sorry. The president has, has uh, forwarded, according to Lily Sun, the president has forwarded names of ministerial nominees to the Senate president, Kozwila Kwabio, for confirmation. According to reports, um, you know that we, many Nigerians are waiting and speculating on the names that will be on the ministerial list. He had to end of July. He and the governors that have been elected have to end of July to provide the names of their ministers and commissioners for screening. And currently, according to the, to the report, DSS has finally concluded background checks, uh, which included security screening of all the ministerial nominees uh, prior to their, uh, um, and on, on, other, on other nominees also. Um, some have also speculated that these people will be picked from politicians, um, private sectors, as well as politicians who played roles in mergers of Tinubu as president, and people who have also worked with him in the past. But how it was um, can that civil society, you know, civil society organizations of Nigeria and can all the non-profit organizations have also appealed to the government not to bring back all politicians. According to them, they need to look for viable and uh, viable and professional youth who are occupying various offices nationwide and engage them instead of using old, worn-out, fatigued and corrupt leaders that have brought the country to his knees. That he should find young people who um, who are strong enough and can actually. Be, um, Contribute to the development of our country. Can deliver. Okay. Course. Moving on now to Vanguard. Anger as petrol hits 568 naira to the liter in Lagos and 617 naira in Abuja. Subsidy removal. Tinubu orders review of proposed 8,000 naira cash transfer. Anthrax. Stop eating meat from sick animals. NCDC wants Nigerians. No. Exchange rate. Foreign scholarships to be suspended for two years, says Ted Fund. Reps to security agencies stop setting vessels uh, with stolen crude on fire. I think you asked that question too recently. Court asked Echo Bank to pay Honeywell 72.2 billion naira in damages. Okay, I remember you're concerned about the burning yes, of why vessels. Burn? So I guess reps are telling them to stop burning. Yeah, it doesn't Go ahead. Mm. Yes, I was going to talk about anthrax. So uh, NCDC, that's Nigeria Center for Disease Control, has warned Nigerians against consuming meat of sick animals as they may contain anthrax. We also have the House of Reps, has urged the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development to collaborate with relevant stakeholders to implement effective surveillance, vaccination, and awareness campaigns to contain the outbreak of anthrax. Um, so I guess for a lot of people who are wondering what this is, so they say it's a spore-forming bacteria and it affects ruminants like cows, sheep, and goats, you know, the sort of animals we, we normally consume as food, and that um, it's transmittable uh, from contaminated animals to humans. So you don't, if you eat them, if you handle them, if you come in contact with someone who has handled them, it can affect you. So people who are affected by this, are, are animals that are affected by this, you see them be, um, bleeding, their nose, their ears, their mouths, everywhere, their orifices. So we need to be careful. They're asking us not to consume meat that, um, of sick animals, be careful where we buy our meat. And of course, I'm hoping this is where the government comes in to make sure that the abattoirs, that the meat that um, is being sold to people is hygienic. But also I have to use this opportunity to talk about my vultures. You know when I say vultures eat carcasses, one of the, um, and when they eat them, even when they're sick, uh, vultures do not get sick, and this is one of the ways that they protect us from outbreaks of diseases like that. And anthrax is one of the things that the vulture can eat, and it does not affect the vulture. So uh, we can see how a reduction in or the uh, ongoing extinction. extinction of vultures can affect us. You know, sometimes we tell the story, it just seems far and far away from us, but you know, we can you see need to how it really more affects us. So to save us from anthrax. Oh, we have vultures, just don't kill them. Don't kill them. because they have enough? I hadn't we seen don't. them. We don't have I used have to enough. go to the north, I used to see them everywhere. I don't know about now, I haven't been for many, many yes. years. But Numbers are... in, in Kaduna, Kano, I saw a lot of um, vultures. vultures. They should just stay by the abattoir waiting, mm. not finished, so that we can come and You won't see so many of them, them anymore, and that's why we have that campaign where we're encouraging Nigerians hey. not to kill them. We need our vultures now. <laughs> that's <laughs> more than ever. Angered. Yeah. I was going to take Ted Fund. Um, Ted Fund says that that's the executive secretary 
of um, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, uh, Mr. Sony Echono, yesterday dropped a hint that the, planner, the panel has planned to suspend uh, all foreign scholarships for two years due to the current, current exchange rate. Um, according to the consultations are ongoing because currently they are being owed 330, billion naira by the oh. federal government and have actually borrowed over 371 billion out of which only 48 billion has been paid. Um, he was speaking at the public hearing um, at, at, uh, for the, at, the, at, the, at the House of Representatives yesterday because according to the way he was talking about the 2.3 million naira allegedly um, that was uh, missing from TED Fund. So he was obviously saying that they can't continue to because it's hard for them to source dollars, although the, the account is domiciled in the CVN, but they're having issues sourcing for dollars. So they might have to suspend this scholarship they give to Nigerians who travel abroad for the next years until, until they're able to iron out these issues of the missing and the money, funds money and the money is paid. paid. Yeah. Okay, we have to go on a break. Is there any other story? Let's, let's... It's just that the, the vessel, the, the, they burned the vessel, but nobody knows where the stolen crude oil that was inside. Went to. Oh. They always claim they burn, they it, burn together. it together. That's what they say. Yeah. Yeah. So why will you burn and waste that amount? There, there was um, it was an eight hundred thousand ton capacity. Hell. And then you now burnt all the oil inside. Mm -hmm. ah. hey. That is that's to get bow leg. Yes. Get bow leg. Go. No pun so. intended. Okay. <sighs> but anyways, I can fix this country. Oh no. We don't even have cho a choice. Not That's like we have a choice. We can take <laughs> one page review. When we come back. Once our hot topic of the day, stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.